Welcome to this edition of Cattle Call. I'm Susan Littlefield. A variety of things that we're going to be talking about in this marketplace include the funds, what's been going on there. Could we be adding back some dollars to this cash market, even after the frustrations that we saw in this last week? And then add to it, how current are we really as we head into November with the COVID concerns that are out there? And we're seeing you know, many states going to 50%, some saying no restaurants at all. Is that going to cause for a concern? As you can see on the screen, Brad Coima is joining me. He's with Coima, Coima and Varlick out of Sioux Center, Iowa. So let's start, Brad. Let's look at these funds. Are they causing some issues for the markets? <laughs> oh, boy, that, uh, yes, uh, in a word, uh, that would be putting it mildly. And I think what you just saw is what happens when you have a small market like cattle, um, uh, you know, like compared to corn, for instance. Uh, a significantly less amount of open interest, significantly less volume on a given day. Um, and and so what what happened there was you had the funds at one point that were thought to be long a little more than 85,000 uh, December cattle. And, you know, some of it is is uh, chronological where they get to a certain part of the month prior and they start to move some of their position. That was a tiny bit of it. But I, the, the bulk of this thing, I think that the funds decided to move either all the way out or to move their positions to some of the back months. And it's because of two things. One is the flare up of COVID, uh, both here and in Europe. I think with the flare up in Europe and some of the people worried about what they're seeing that some of those countries there do, which is, you know, sh shutting down almost again, you know, the restaurant trade and things like that. Uh, stories about, for instance, Chicago, which is talking about el eliminating all inside dining. Um, uh, you know, then we, we, we trigger all those, oh no, Let's hope we don't have to go through what we did again right in March and April. Um, and, 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 and yet, yes, so the demand side of that is, is, is certainly a reason why they, I think, liquidated or moved their positions back. Probably less important, but also part of the deal is the uncertainty around the election. Okay. Uh, and, you know, speculative traders, fund traders don't like uncertainty. So, um, you know, I, I'm kind of in the camp that I, I'm pretty sure the sun's going to come up Wednesday morning, no matter who wins. Um, and I, I really think that one, you know, I think we'd be surprised how honestly, how little things may change with a different president. I mean, we've we've had a Democrat before. We've had a Republican before. Um, so I'm hopeful that after this washout. So now you've taken 50,000 out of the open interest. Nobody there to replace it. You see the December cattle have the big tumble until the last few days now. We seem to have had some change in ownership and according to the last uh, Commitment Traders report, it looks as though the commercials have started to come back onto the buy side, which is good. Uh, we've had two nice days here. I uh, hope we have a nice up in the open interest again today, yesterday, a nice update and a big increase in the open interest. So we did get some new longs in the market. So I'm glad we're talking today and we have just a little bit of hope to talk about. <laughs> Can we get those dollars added back to the cash market to bring some revenue back to the cattle producer? Oh boy, if we don't, it's going to be a long, long winter. Uh, you know, a lot of this yearling type cattle that, that's that been bought need 112, 115 to break even. You know, if we're going to sit here at 102, uh, it's horrible. Uh, I believe, you know, I have been, and I think I've said it on your show that I thought December cattle could go to 120. I have not given up on that idea yet. Um, we're going to show have to show some leadership from the cash. Uh, you know, the cash market seems to uh, that old saying: a chain is as as strong as its weakest link. Uh, right now, we've got a weak link in that we've got some big cattle in the north. Um, is it excessive? I don't believe so. Is it un terribly unusual to have a few of those in October? No, not at all, because it's the long fed calf. It's the nature of the business. But the packer seems to really be able to to exert the extra pressure, you know. So we sold a lot of big cattle here last week. We're working on selling some more this week. Uh, I've seen, this is encouraging to me, maybe dull to most of your listeners, but the old people will appreciate this. This time of year, I always watch for when the cattle start to get exported from the north down to the south, uh, which would be an indication to me that the south is now current. Uh, particularly, there's a couple of packers that like to buy high choice and prime. And so when they come up here, that tells me that, well, we're the source for that high choice and prime steer, right? Uh, and that would come from a long fed calf. So I've seen that from three of the big four this last week. And so my and cattle here in Iowa, exporting them to Kansas. Um, so I'm taking some encouragement from that too. Uh, you know, that doesn't fix it in 24 hours, but it's a medicine that it takes to, to help us get better. 
So as we wrap this up, can we stay current knowing that all this COVID is issues are starting to take place across, across the nation with more shutdowns? As long as, as long as the shutdowns don't include places like Greeley, right? Grand, I mean, I'm talking about the, 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 the plants themselves. Um, that was really the biggest, uh, one of the biggest issues, of course, when we had the late winter, early spring. Um, it would seem to me that the protocols, protocols that they have put in place, Susan, are working. Uh, we have very, very good kill, consistently good kill. Even the last two weeks where we've had this big spike, we're still able to get 118, 120 killed a day. Uh, and so I'm a glass half full guy. <clears throat> it looks to me like the protocols that they've put in place are working, and I'm hopeful that we'll keep cattle current. Uh, now we just need a little more confidence. And, and that probably comes from a, a, the retail sector. I think they're going to find out, you know, you don't, the only place that you can have a steak is not just a restaurant. You can do that at home. And we found that out this summer. Let's hope we find that out for the winter too. All right. Sounds good. Thanks so much. Brad Coyne has been joining us today. Just a reminder, commodity futures and options do involve substantial risk of loss are not suitable for all investors. That's the, this week's Cattle Call. Have a great rest of your week.